I am so annoyed right now because I wanted to use this wired lav mic that I have to record this video blog so that the audio would not be so terrible because I'm in kind of an echoey room, even though it's a small room. This is the connector on the microphone and it's an eighth inch standard jack, but the phone only has a USB-C on it. And I have a dongle that's supposed to connect to the eighth inch to the USB-C, but unfortunately I can't find the dongle because I keep moving. Every time I move, I can't find things. And I have to like, you know, you have like a junk drawer in your house. And I think you only really have a junk drawer if you've like lived there for a long time. You just accumulate all this stuff. But because we keep moving, I don't know where, I have a box from the last move from my office that was just like miscellaneous drawer stuff. It might be in there, I have no idea. I used to carry this dongle in my laptop bag because I would hook it up to my like earbuds to use with my phone when I would have meetings and stuff. I don't know what happened to that. I switched laptop bags a few months ago and it's not my new one. I checked my old one. It's not my old one because I don't get rid of anything. So I'm sorry that the audio is a little echoey on this one, uh, but it's just a video blog. I just wanted to touch base because I don't know if you guys saw, but I uh, posted a new video last week that was welcoming you to PJ Plus, which is what you're watching right now. This is PJ Plus. This is original content exclusive to this, this channel. Probably not. I might post this at other places and then it's not exclusive anymore, but who cares? It's still better than Kibi, Kweebi, Kubi, Kabi, whatever that thing's called that lost like $72 billion. PJ Plus was one of those things that grew from a silly note that I made on my phone. I don't know, it was sometime around when Apple TV Plus did their big announcement last fall of like the original program. So on YouTube, there's a like featured video that you can have. And it's basically like something for returning subscribers, but something for new subscribers also. I wanted something that like encapsulated what is this, what is PJ all about? Because it's, I mean, it's an unbranded channel. It's just PJ Perez is the brand, right? So I was like, oh, well, let's poke fun at the fact that it's really a bunch of garbage content. Pretty much, it's this. I kind of merge those ideas together and I'm like, okay, I'll make a video I can use as that sort of welcome video for new subscribers and at the same time get in a little parody of Apple TV Plus or whatever. It wasn't really specifically Apple TV Plus, it was just in general streaming services. It was the same time HBO Max was announced and all that sort of stuff. I have a lot of these notes on my phone in this little Inkpad app, which is like this not very great app, but I've been using it for so long that it's like my go-to Android note-taking app. Even though I could just open a Google Doc and that would make more sense since I live in Google Docs. I mean, I have like I have an entire like partially completed screenplays just as notes. Because what I eventually do is once something gets to be big enough of an idea that it's no longer just an idea, it's actually a, a product or a, you know, a, a creative whatever, I will then copy that, put it into, you know, whatever screenwriting software or into an actual Google Doc and then build it out from there. So PJ Plus was one of those things. Uh, I was originally gonna have just someone record a voiceover, like, you know, a very professional voiceover, and then I was gonna do it all graphics. I wasn't gonna appear in it at all. Instead of doing the voiceover thing, I decided to just uh, record myself one day, just, you know, doing the kind of introduction. And I appear very briefly in this, right? I'm in there for like, maybe like, I don't know, 10 seconds total. I have so many of these, like, silly ideas that I come up with for all sorts of things. They might be videos, they might be films, they might be comics, they might be just blog posts, and they're kind of scattered all over the place because I've got some of them in this Inkpad app, I've got some of them as like partially started Google Docs, I've got some of them as like lists within those docs. I need to keep track of all this stuff. And I haven't really found a good way, but I literally went through and I compiled the list and I was like, okay, here's all the dang ideas. Here's all the ideas. TV scripts and videos and song, I mean songs and like parodies and movies and like a lot of the like comedy type stuff that I want to do that I think I've talked about before is usually in here and I don't ever get around to actually executing it because I'm too busy doing serious things or being depressed. There's a ton of unfinished ideas like blog posts alone and some of the stuff I've actually drafted and never published. Some of it is just like, it's just literally just a subject line. Here's the list of all the all the ideas that I haven't executed on yet, okay? So one thing is selling papers. This was gonna be about when I used to sell subscriptions for a newspaper in Simi Valley, California, when I was a kid. It's a good story, one day I'll tell it. Uh, tower of CDs. So this is really old. I was originally going to go through my CD tower 
This tells you how old this is. Go through my CD tower and like basically tell the story of each of the CDs in there. Like I thought that would have been interesting. Be like, oh, I got this at the Tower Records on Maryland Parkway after da 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 da. By the time I, got, I ever ha got around to it, I literally had sold all my CDs or donated them or I'd done whatever with them. Uh, weird science. A uh, story about how I wanted to be a scientist when I was a kid. I will probably come back to that. Um, I did start writing a love letter to the Las Vegas City Life after it was announced that it would cease publishing. Never did anything with that. My downtown. This was back when downtown Vegas was like, boop, 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 everybody was talking about downtown Las Vegas. And I lived downtown and I played downtown and I was like, my downtown and your downtown are different things. Uh, pet peeves. That's kind of self-explanatory. No one needs that, that negativity. DJ PJ. I have no idea what this is about. It's just... It just says for blog, DJ PJ. Sometimes I email myself ideas and I tag them blog ideas in my email. You're seeing how an ADHD mind works right now, by the way. So I hope you're enjoying this and studying this for your psychology degree. Box. Oh, this was a, a, ch a chapter for a memoir that I may one day write. I have written some chapters for just here and there. Bloodletting, a rumination of how messed up it is that gay men can't donate blood. Don't really need a roommate, it's just messed up. Uh, heaven, ah, <laughs> this would be comparing all 1980 songs with the word heaven in the title. I'll probably come back to that. Tricks, ah, another uh, possible memoir chapter about uh, tricks my brother and I used to play on each other when we were kids. A uh, hair, yes. This was going to be a blog post about my tense relationship with hair and having it or not having it. We're sort of in the middle right now. Thanks, Obama. This was actually going to be a thing I was going to write when Obama, when his second term ended, literally saying thanks. That's all. Trumping us, uh, you could figure that one out. Uh, that was written shortly thereafter. Tinkerer, um, this is a, this I'll come back to. Convention transition. Apparently I wrote an entire blog post about exhibiting at Long Beach Comic Con and how it kind of impacted my thoughts about comic conventions in general. And I don't know why I never published it. And it's irrelevant now because it was several years ago. Stay weird. This would have been a rumination on growing up a weirdo. I probably will write it someday, or maybe do a video blog, you guys tell me. If, by the way, if any of these ideas sound interesting, just pipe in the comments and be like, hey, these are good ideas. Uh, the art of adulting. Eh. Early 90s AOR. Okay, apparently <laughs> it's about my love for soft rock from the early 90s, like stuff like Annie Lennox and Sting and John Cicada. I, that probably led to my like eventual like affinity for Yacht Rock. California 2. I started to write a blog post about living two years in California and never did and now it's been three and a half so that's gone. Maroon 5 effect. This is one of those just notes in my ink pad that's basically like I was listening to some band on the radio who used to be kind of like a harder edged alternative rock band and now they're like a sort of pop funk band. And it was basically how Maroon 5 sort of kicked that off. And you see all these other bands who transition. Crippling effect. Uh, this was basically me whining about how long it took me to recover from my hernia repair. Philadelphia story. We will actually talk about this soon. This will be a video blog that's coming up. Hospice. I think this was inspired by an NPR story on like uh, people's end of life care. And I don't, I don't know. I'm not gonna do anything with that. I miss the Audis. Reminiscing about life before the Great Recession. I guess the Bush years weren't so bad? I don't know. Uh, age and pop, come back to that. The new anxiety. This was a post COVID-19 quarantine thing that was gonna be kind of talking about. Actually, I think I wrote it. It was basically like, this was when I was transitioning from having my old blog bleeding me on to what's next. And I just, there was a bunch of stuff I drafted that I never published and this was among them. And we get into ideas for like comics and books and other stuff. Like comics, so I, for a while, was doing this um, sort of gag, not gag strip, but I was doing this web comic called Sequential Madness, which is why my Instagram handle is Sequential Madness. And they were just like one off, for the most part, just like goofy things. Uh, I had some ideas. One was Yacht Rock Avengers. Average day, this is actually pretty recent. It was going to be a pie chart showing how much my day is spent taking care of our dogs. Uh, new levels of hell. <laughs> I think I was gonna do like an illustrated thing where like there's new levels of hell based on like 
annoying things. Uh, this kind of ties into the pet peeves thing, but like, for example, people who watch videos in public with the sound turned on. Like, I don't know. I thought it was kind of amusing. I have one comic book pitch that was actually going to be a pitch for Marvel Comics. Quasar is this cosmic superhero character who got his own series in the early 90s. I loved it. And then they did all sorts of other things with Quasar, because whatever, you know, and they, he, he, he died and he came back or he became someone else or he became a woman. I don't know, whatever happened. I thought it would be kind of interesting to do Quasar as a man out of time. Early 90s Quasar comes back in the like mid, whatever we're in, the 2020s. And, you know, after being dead for however long and he's dealing with that. That was the whole, that was the whole idea. <laughs> so there's book ideas. Um, a couple of these I don't want to talk about because they're actually, I think, good ideas and even mentioning the title will potentially lead to someone else. Who's, who else is going to watch? There's going to be 15 people are going to watch this thing. Only like one of you is going to get through the whole thing. So one of the things is Bleeding Neon, which is the name for my proposed memoir about coming of age in Las Vegas, which makes sense. It's a brand that I've had and used and it's a domain that I own and all that. I found a draft of the beginning of, an, of a children's book that would star um, our dogs uh, with them demonstrating good habits for kids. And then we get into the movies and TVs and videos. Uh, some of the stuff I don't want to talk about because again, I'm, they're things I'm working on and I don't want to put them out there until uh, there's something to put out. So I found a note that just says crime ep and it's basically like the dumbest, most cliche cold open for like a procedural criminal TV show that you can imagine. It's basically like people walking down the street and they find a body under the truck. It was it was inspired by like, I think I was with some with some friends and we were walking down the street and I saw like there was a lot, like an empty lot and there was maybe shoes or underwear or something on the ground. And I was like, oh, this is like the setup for like a Law & Order episode. That was it, that was the whole, that was the whole thing. I don't know why I wrote it down. Untitled crime drama based on some real life family drama. Oh, I remember what this is about. I'm not gonna go into detail on it. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. Um, then there's all of my YouTube ideas. There's something called Ben Salem, which is notes for a video blog on the Philly suburb that I lived in for a few years as a kid, related to my return there this summer. It's sort of tied into the Philadelphia one, so that'll probably be just like a, a whole thing. Bad arguments. Why progressives can't get broad support for what should be easy sells. So I have all these ideas for um, kind of political or topical videos that would require me to do a lot of research because I, I would never go talk on a topic without actually knowing what I'm talking about. It's a lie, but I try not to. I never get around to doing them because it takes, I don't have the time to do the research or I don't take the time to do the research and then I just don't do it and it's kind of frustrating because I would like to, but then there's a whole series of basically uh, parodies of filmmaking videos. Cause there's, you know, there's all these YouTube channels and they're great, they're very helpful. And I've actually, I've, I've used a lot of the advice in a lot of them. Uh, I'm obviously not using a lot of the advice right now because this looks like crap and sounds like crap, but deal with it. They're all like the same. Like I had this perfect example. There was this one day, like two weeks ago, uh, a new uh, stabilizer came out from DJI or something. Every single filmmaking YouTuber I follow posted a review of it. And it was like, just my, my subscriptions in YouTube was like five videos of just like all, just a bunch of dudes reviewing the same piece of equipment. There's so many, like, you're like, oh, how to get that cinematic look, you know, da da da. How to do three point lighting. And it's all the same stuff. And the delivery is awesome. You're like, hey, what's up? Welcome back to my blah, 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 blah. Today we're gonna do the that, that. It's just silly to me. So I was gonna do some parody videos. I might still. I've never done like a fan anything. I've never done like my take on someone else's IP um, outside of like as a joke in sequential madness. But I had this idea for doing a trailer for a film adaptation of the 80s X Factor comic book series by Marvel Comics which starred the original X-Men, but the conceit was that they were posing as mutant hunters when they were actually rescuing mutants. I actually think that's a good concept. I wrote the whole treatment for a, for a fake trailer, and I was gonna actually work on producing it and then uh, coronavirus set in, and that's why I'm sitting here talking to my phone instead of out making stuff. So ideas, I don't have that many. Uh, quarantine dance. 
I was gonna do a parody of the safety dance at the beginning of quarantine, and I didn't do that. And then a couple of random things. Uh, the last things on this list. Interview dad. This is really sad. This is super sad. I wanted to do either video interviews or audio interviews with my dad because I just don't know a lot about his life prior to him coming into our lives. Especially not about his childhood in Mexico. So I wanted to get that down, especially knowing that he wasn't doing that great. I wasn't sure how much longer he had. And of course, unfortunately, he didn't have that much longer. <laughs> this, is, this is getting very serious. I have, okay, musical couple. What did, I have no idea what this is for. Girl and guy finally get together. She inspires him to write songs for her. They both audition for a Hamilton type of show. She gets cast as the wife. He gets cast, but in a minor role. Sparks between actor. I have no idea what I don't. I'm guessing this was supposed to be like a short film. Maybe I don't. I don't know. I mean, it sounds okay. It sounds a little trite. I, but I have no idea what this is. It's just a note that's called musical couple, and then it's just like this. Okay, so this was an idea for an actual immersive Spanish class, or I guess a, a Spanish learning platform, like an entire system, where instead of just taking classes to learn Spanish, or instead of like listening to, you know, podcasts or these interactive apps, uh, the Spanish class would take place in an immersive environment. If you've ever taken a language class, like usually the workbooks kind of, they put you in these false situations to help you learn vocabulary. So it's like, oh, at the market, or, you know, at the butcher, you know, whatever. My idea was, well, you actually set it up to where you're in a physical environment and maybe that physical environment is a store, right? Or it's a classroom or it's a, you know, an office environment, whatever. Something like a practical environment so that when you're there, like everyone around you is speaking. So it's not just a single Spanish teacher. It's basically like you're immersed in like, I mean, I guess you could just do this by going to like a, primarily like Armenian or Vietnamese or, you know, Mexican neighborhood and just that's, you do. but like the point is you would have interactions and like someone would be like, oh, you know, trying to sell you an apple or whatever. And you would have to ask for the apple in that language. I don't know. I thought it was kind of an interesting idea, but I don't know what to do with that. I am not a foreign language educator. So that's it. That's, I come up with all these ideas and they just, a lot of them just sit there, but a lot of them do eventually make it to the world at some point. Uh, they take a lot of time. I mean, it all depends on the level of effort. If it's a blog post, all I gotta do is sit down and write it. That in itself can be a lot of effort, but it's not as much as effort as say, you know, I wanna do this short film, which that actually requires like actors and sets and production and all that sort of stuff. A lot, a lot of this stuff just doesn't get done, but instead you get like a 15 minute YouTube video that no one's gonna watch and that's fine because this is really more for my own edification. But that's sort of a summary of how we got to PJ Plus. <laughs> and there's going to be some other stuff similar to that coming down the line in the near future. I don't know why. I mean, no one's asking for this content. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to do anything cute. It's really just a ma it's, it's a way for me to work on my production skills and to get things out right now while I'm finishing this documentary and while I can't go and shoot anything else. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the weird crap that's gonna be coming up next and I hope you enjoyed this trip through my um, insane brain and uh, my messy office, which is messy for reasons we'll talk about in a future video blog. All right, love you.